Hi, my name is Dr. Laura Vietti, and I manage the University of Wyoming Geological Museum. Today, I am going to show you how to prepare fossil fish for our annual fossil fish festival using your fossil fish kit. So without further ado, let's take a look and see what's inside each of our kits. Okay, so we should each have safety goggles. We should have a rock pick with a cute little racer on top of it. Be really careful, these are sharp. So make sure you have um, your parents with you if you wanna use this. Next we have our fossil fish piece. Yours should all look different. Every single one is unique. So don't be surprised if it looks different than mine or um, you see something else that's different here. And that's again, because every single fish is different. Also in your instruction or your kits, you should have an information sheet that talks about how the fossils formed and an illustrated guide about how to, to prep your fossil fish. And last but not least, we have the um, directions for how to do this fossil activity. So in this video, I'm gonna be following along um, the directions here, but it's easier to see it in person than, um, than to do it all on your own. Okay, so first off, let's get oriented with your fossil. So go ahead and take a look at your fossil. This is a piece of Green River formation. What that means is that it's a rock unit that formed at the same time in the same environment. And so believe it or not, this hard rock developed in an ancient lake system about 52 million years ago. So this one came from Fossil Lake, which is right here in Kemmerer, Wyoming. It's on the, almost the western edge of the, the states. And it came from this huge freshwater lake that lived along, that was here a long time ago. And it would have looked something a little bit like this. And so 52 million years ago, Wyoming was much warmer, much wetter, and we had basically a tropical environment much like this picture. So if you guys can see it. So this fish rock right here developed at the bottom of this lake that you can see here in the picture. So every one of you has a rock that has one part of a small fish. Some of you have whole fish, but most of you have really small fish bits. And the reason that you have fish bits is because they're not scientifically important and they're perfect for you guys to practice on. Okay, now that you've learned a little bit about where this fish came from, let's go ahead and take a look at your rock. So you'll notice that there's some flat sides, longer sides, and then there's also some really thin sides. This rock formed at the bottom of a lake where layers of sediment would lay down like, um, like layers in a cake. And so if you're lucky on these thinner sides, you might be able to see examples of these layers, but the flat part is all from a single layer and that's where you're gonna find your fish. Now, one of the most interesting things about these rocks is that it's one of Wyoming's scratch and sniff rocks. So go ahead and take your fingernail, find just a regular piece of with no, no, no brown material, scratch it, and then go ahead and sniff it. Mmm. Do you guys recognize what that is? That smells a little bit like a gas station. And that's because this is a type of oil shale. Um, little tiny microorganisms were part of the deposition of the rock layers. And over time, they cook just like you would in, a, in an oven and they develop into an early type of oil. And so what you're smelling is little dead phytoplankton and organisms. But it's the same thing as what oil is made out of. Okay. So now let's take a look and see if we can find the start of your fossil. Again, every single one of you has a fossil. It's just trying to identify it that's the hard part. If you'll notice on your rock, it's a lot of light colored material. Sometimes you'll see browner parts and those are what we're looking for. So take a look and see if you can find a piece of brown, um, perhaps with bones or with fish scales, and that's gonna be your fish skeleton. Sometimes you'll have just a very itty bitty bit exposed and sometimes you might have most of the fish exposed. Every single one is different. So in my case, here's a better look. This part right here is the actual fish skeleton. You can see here's the white layer and there's a piece of rock covering this fish skeleton and it's a browner color compared to the white rock. It looks like there might be a little bit more of them over here. And if we turn it around, there's nothing on the back. Take a look at your rock. See if you can find the part where the actual fish starts. And again, every single one of you has a different one. 
Okay, now that you've identified where the fish skeleton might be, can you guys guess what your what part of the fish it is? So in my case, I have I have, here's my pick, fish vertebral column right there. This is going to be the very edge of the fish. These are ribs, and right down here, past this edge of the fish right there, we have what looks like to be part of a fin, a ventral fin on the belly of the fish. So even though I don't have a head, I think the head would have lived out here, there is a good chance I might have a tail right there. So this is what you're looking for. See if you can identify what kind of fish you have. I definitely sent out fish bits with fish heads, fish tails, fish bodies, fish scales. Um, there's a whole bunch of different types out there. So take a look. I'm going to break right now and take a look and see if you can figure out what you have. Okay, now that you have all identified which where your fish is on the rock, that's where you're going to want to ultimately work to prepare it to remove the top rock to expose the rest of the fish. So now let's learn on how to properly use your tools to remove that layer of rock. So first thing, I'm going to have all of you find the side with your fish. Now flip it over and go ahead and put that on the ground. Next up, make sure you're wearing your safety glasses because we're going to create a whole bunch of dust and I don't want to get it in your eyeballs. Now go ahead and pick up your fossil kit. Um, pick. This is a fossil pick. I want to put your fingers right where we've put a handy little um, finger pad and you want to hold it just like a pencil. That's because you have the most control in this position. Now go ahead and take off your eraser and you should be left with a really pointy tip. Now be careful. It's pretty sharp so don't jab it anywhere. Be really careful with it. So on the side without the fish, let's practice what it feels like to use this pick to scratch the rock. Because again, your ultimate goal is to use this to remove the material to expose the rest of the fish. So hold it just like a pencil, put it on the rock, and very gently push down. And you should see the point go into the rock and create some dust. Okay, here's a close-up of what I meant. So go ahead and hold yours just like a pencil, and go ahead and Put some pressure and see if you can get the rock to flake off. Now after about three seconds, use your breath and blow it away. Just like that. And try again. And the whole point of this is just to get practice to see if you can really get a good idea of how much pressure is needed to move away the rock. Okay. So that is a great start. Okay, now when you're comfortable with how to pick, how much pressure is needed and how to hold your pick, just like this, we're gonna move on to the side with the fish. Let's go ahead and flip your specimen. And again, here is mine. There's the actual fish fossil right here. And this is the rock that we want to chip away to expose the rest of the fossil. So when you feel ready, Go ahead and try doing it. It's the exact same as what we did before. So you're going to want to hold this like a pencil. Find the edge of the rock, not the rock with the fish, but the edge with the rock above it. You can sort of see here that this is the rock covering the fish fossil. Hold it and then very lightly you're going to apply pressure and remove some off. And then when you've kicked some off just like that, you want to blow the dust away. Oops, there you go. And see, I just exposed that little bit right there. So let me do it again. Maybe zoom in a little bit further. Okay, sorry, this is with my iPhone, so it's not the best, best quality. Oh, there we go. And blow away. Keep going. Okay, blow away. And as you'll see, I just exposed all of that. Okay, so keep on. You also notice that I'm using my thumb sometimes to brace. Let's see if I can do a better job here. So like that. And like so. Okay, 
Now I'm gonna keep going on this fish, but I'm gonna put it in fast mode to see if I can make some headway. So go ahead and keep watching and you'll see just how much I can get through in a little bit of time. Actually went really fast. So as you saw, I have a finished fish butt. So the head would have been right here and then the spine and then there's its tail. So I did that really fast and I actually chose a fish specimen that was I knew was going to be a little bit easy to prep on because I wanted something really good to show you all. So yours might not go that fast and it might be a whole lot harder and you ha might have more layers to go through or your rock might be harder. So don't be surprised if it, did, if it doesn't go that easy. So just a couple tricks to remind you is again, hold it like a pencil. Sometimes I would brace myself with the other finger and then I would pick for a little bit and then blow the dust away, pick, blow the dust away, pick, blow the dust away and continue that over and over. You don't have to do it all at once. You can do it in little sessions. So five minutes, half an hour, however long is comfortable for you. But you don't have to do it all at once. The fish has been here for 52 million years. It's not going anywhere. Okay, a couple other things. Um, we have these tools that we've provided you. These are not the ideal tools to use, but they're not bad. We as paleontologists have a whole host of other tools that are much more sophisticated. And so we are able to do um, a much easier job prepping these fish because we have the right tool. You guys have an okay tool, but it's not the perfect tool. Um, so as a result, oftentimes it's really easy to pick right through the sediment and into your fish and you'll actually see a little prick. That's okay. Nobody's an expert or nobody's expecting you guys to be an expert on this. You're learning and that's why you have a fish bit, not a whole beautiful fish like the one in the back there. So don't be surprised if you pick and it goes right through the bone layer and it goes through it and it flakes off. That's totally normal. One thing to be careful though is that you make sure if you pick and you go below the bone layer, you stop picking because there's not going to be any more bones down there. So I don't know if you can see this but I've picked through a couple times. I know that's really, really rough. It's shaking. I've picked through a couple times as well. Even me, who has had quite a bit of experience doing this. So don't be surprised if you pick through it. Again, this is just a practice piece. There's more if you want some. Okay, now the fun part. Figure out what you have. So go ahead when you're done, take a look. See if you can identify any of the parts. Mine's really easy because I have the whole backbone here and the backbone orients me to where the fish is. So I have an obvious tail, there would have been a head, here's a fin, and then there's a little fin down here as well. So I pretty much have a fish torso and a fish butt. Can you tell what you guys have? Again, look for that backbone or any sort of fin material. It could be just a really itty bitty small bit like that, or it could be a whole fish. It just depends on which piece you got. Once you figured out your fish, then you might have enough to figure out what it is. And the majority of fish that we have are two types. The first, where's that card? We have two examples here. We have a Nidia, which is our Wyoming state fossil, and we have a Diplomystis. And that is one of the other really common fish. And so I would bet most of you guys have one of these two species. The question is how to tell them apart not always the easiest and sometimes you need the whole fish to do so so don't be surprised if you can't figure it out just know you have a green river fish so this is a printout of two species of green river fish those common ones and this one right here that is the nidia and this is the diplomystis um, some really easy ways that i find to distinguish the two is that the diplomystis has this big deep barreled chest right here whereas the, the nidia 
has quite a bit shallower chest, um, even though they're roughly the same size. So size doesn't tell you. The other thing that I find the most helpful is that Diplomystis has a break in the ribs right here. So you'll see a little break. So if you can see that, you'll know that you have a Diplomystis. Whereas this guy, the Nydia, there's no break. It's just continual ribs all the way to the tail. So that means you have an e uh, a Nydia. So let's go ahead and take a look on my fish. Okay, so here is the fish I just prepared. Now it's not great because I don't have the full rib section. It's a little tough to tell. However, I think because I think I might see a break right there, there's a really good chance that this is a diplomystis. Not 100%, but it's most likely because again, I can see that there's this break right there in the ribs that that's probably indicative of a diplo. And you'll even see that the chest would have been pretty deep. So I think I have a diplomystis, which again is this guy right here. See that big deep chest and then there's that break right there. Whereas the Nydia has just a regular, no break right here all the way to the tails. So again, don't be surprised if you can't ID it. We can't ID all of them. And again, that's why we sent these out as practice pieces because they aren't scientifically important. Well, we're all done. I hope you enjoyed this activity. It's one of my most favorite things to do here at the University of Wyoming. Um, I really enjoy sharing a piece of Wyoming history with you, especially the Green River Fish, because I think they're one of Wyoming's most important and famous resources um, that we have in the world. So with that, please come visit us anytime. We're open Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., close Sundays and holidays. And we always love having Wyomingites come to the museum. Laura Vietti signing off, and we'll see you.